welcome to Global Business. I am your host, Dr. Neva, and today I have a special guest. And this guest, oh my, Dr. Karen Dunkley. Today she's re recording, and it is Emancipation Day for Jamaica. And Dr. Karen is the president of the Jamaica Diaspora. Welcome, doctor. How are you? Wonderful to be here, Dr. Neva. It is indeed. Jamaica is 58 years old. You said Emancipation Day. We call it Emancipation We had Emancipation Day on August 1st, and now we're having Independence August 6th. So we are just excited, certainly, to to celebrate Emancipation for the entire week from the what date was Saturday? Saturday was it the second or the third? Oh, if, I think it's the second. I think I might have said the first because I was like, I'm thinking in my head it's Saturday. <laughs> but yes. So we had certainly our Emancipation Day on August second. We're here with Independence August sixth. Jamaica is 58 years old. The theme is resilient and strong. So thank you for having us. And wishing Jamaica happy independence and all Jamaicans big up and enough respect. Excellent. Yes, yes, yes. So let's just dive right in. Can you tell me a little bit about yourself and the role that you play for the Jamaica diaspora? Thank you so much. That is an excellent question to start, Dr. Neva. As you can see, I am here doing this live in my car because we had our flag raising in Brooklyn, New York today at Brooklyn Borough Hall and a little bit about who Karen Dunkley is and certainly about the role that I am now in. I grew up in Spanish Town in Ensom City. I'm saying Ensom City, I come from. I went to high school. I attended high school in Jamaica. I graduated from St. Catherine High School for five years and I attended Woman's Girls Sixth Warm for two years. And so I'm a proud, certainly proud of my high schools, my alma maters, and absolutely St. Catherine High, having been a five-year student there. In terms of who I am, I have a very unique story because I attended college in the United States, St. John's University and Columbia University, but I just want to stay in Jamaica a little, little bit, if that's okay. I actually am also a farmer. My mom, Mrs. Robert Dunkley, has passed on to me her love and talent for farming. And we have enough, 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 enough acres in Bush, St. Elizabeth up in Eldersley. So I share that because while I grew up in Ensom City, Spanish town, we spent our summers in Eldersley, St. Elizabeth with our grandparents, which is where we have our farm. And we just raised some chickens we sold, but we grow everything on that farm cocoa yam banana ginger pepper in fact we just had some pretty larceny they stole two of my yam hills and now a thing on my ginger but it's all right it's jamaica one love so who i am i'm an educator i'm certainly a jamaican daughter i'm a garveyite i believe in what marcus garvey has taught us that we must do for self and that we must build our race and that we must focus on economics. And I'm certainly an entrepreneur and I'm a child of God. So that is who I am in a nutshell. And I've lived certainly in the United States, like most Jamaicans, I go to Jamaica a lot and I spend three months out of every year in Jamaica, Dr. Neva. This is the first year due to COVID-19 that I'm not in Jamaica. I'm typically in Jamaica all of June, July, and August. Wow, that's a big nutshell. You wrap it up in a nutshell, but that's a big one. And you know, I'm really impressed with the farmer part because you know, your mom passed it on to you. And most of the time I'm hearing the men, you know, in farming. So they hear women in farming. Uh, I mean, I love it and it is commendable. So um, with the Jamaican diaspora, you know, what resources are available through the diaspora? Great question. 
as the global jamaica diaspora northeast representative we represent 14 states the northeast comprises of we call it the v to v so we begin in new england dr neva we're at vermont maine new hampshire massachusetts we travel through to connecticut rhode island and then we continue to new york new jersey and then we continue with pennsylvania delaware Maryland, Washington DC, Virginia, West Virginia, right? And those are our 14 states. And what our primary role is to certainly engage with diasporans here around national development. We align to specific sector areas, education, health, community development, youth empowerment. We're strong believers in food and agriculture, crime and citizen security as well as the faith base economic development and empowerment so those are our key sector areas and strategic areas of focus the reason why that is important dr neva is when we talk about the resources that are available to diaspora and to jamaicans it's aligned to those core sector areas so let's just stick with the economic development and empowerment because as we pivot from covid 19 we really have to think seriously and strategically about our community economics. So there are two components. There's a personal economy, Dr. Neva, that's you and I saying, how do I pay my bills? Do I own real estate? If I owe loans, the mortgages, did I take my forbearance on those? What is the plan for forbearance? What plans in terms of repayment options do I need to explore? Those are personal economies. How are my utilities? Did I, if I'm eligible, did I file for unemployment? If I'm a business owner, did I apply for every federal program? There was tremendous amount of money available around the Paycheck Protection Program. Did I apply for my injury disaster loan through the Small Business Association? And that is key. So the resources that we offer, we launch an economic development and empowerment sector. We're asking everyone, if you need assistance, in terms of your personal economy, now we don't have no money to give out Dr. Neva. Like people call and say, you know, I need a hundred, I can't pay my bills. I'm gonna talk about that in a little while, but this is very specific. If it is that you have questions or you want to know where to find money now, we can have you talk to one of our experts. They are actually within the field. We have a fight a team of financial experts, we have small business owners, and they work around, and this is all free. So we sign a disclaimer, so we make sure that we're not liable for any lawsuits, that this is professionals giving their time, accountants and financial planners and insurance, people who are experts and bankers. And the resource that we offer is to make sure that now during COVID and after COVID in terms of the personal economy, Dr. Neva, our community, we have to ensure that we come out whole. We may not be as whole as we were, but we want to come out standing. We don't want to come out with bankruptcies or where our, our businesses collapse or where we are homeless because our homes have gone into foreclosure or we're coming out with high debt. So that is important to communicate to our constituents. And I must commend the Northeast Think Tank. The Jamaica Diaspora Northeast Think Tank primarily has held the banner around this. We have an excellent committee. We have Tracy Tomlinson. We have Tracy Ann Brammer. We have Wayne Thompson. We have Donahue Bailey. We have Virginia Butler. We also have Tracy Andrews. That is our core team. So in terms of resources, I just want to spend some time on this because what I have recognized and observed in this role is that our economic development and empowerment in terms of our personal economy is an area that as a people we have to focus on. I want to pivot now from the personal economy to the community economics. And here's what I mean. Small businesses are the backbone of any community. Small businesses, employment, small businesses means that our money is able to turn over in our community and generate wealth if not created. So what we have encouraged and we are encouraging small business owners to do is to reach out to us. If you're not sure 
what you are eligible to apply for you can go to our website at www.janed.org jned which stands for jamaica northeast diaspora www.janed.org send us your email we will be in touch with you or you can email us directly at nediaspora at gmail.com and what we provide definitely and i'll have no, yes, you sir, i was just gonna say i was just gonna say that the link will also be available for anyone that wants it who did not um get the information clearly from you but please go ahead thank you yes and that is great right because you have different learning styles so some people will hear it and some people need to see it so thank you so much for that they need to reach us immediately because there are many federal programs the paycheck protection program was one such program that very small team and bishop sean bartley out of philadelphia tree united church we were able to work with small business owners from across the northeast faith-based daycare centers construction companies restaurants consulting services and we were able to help Jamaicans access 2.6 million dollars worth of federal aid. The paycheck That's impressive. That is very impressive. Thank you. And to us, it wasn't a lot because we know that billions of dollars, the government had billions of dollars on the table. For us as a community, it's information. Knowledge is power. So pay attention to the small business forums. We did one on the federal aid. We did one on the injury protection, but it's not only getting the money, it's using the money in a way that it meets the criteria so that the government will forgive the loan. This is not money that we take to buy brand new shiny cars that do not appreciate in value. This is money that is very specific intended for business purposes so that you as a small business owners and our small businesses can continue and i just want to emphasize that there's so many grants available through community development financial institutions the cdfis and again information is power so we try as much to post on our facebook page we try to send it through our mailchimp but we always miss someone. Why? Some people are not on social media or we, we don't have the email. So if you know someone who has a small business, you may not be a small business owner, but you can ask them to email us as nediaspora at gmail.com. Because we found, Dr. Neva, that so many members of our community had difficulty engaging with the banks around these federal grants and loans because there was no relationship or that we didn't have our taxes completed or whatever the paperwork included that we needed so i just want to pause there but when you say resources that's just what i said a whole lot but i just want to stress the economic development and empowerment because we have to brace for impact and thank you so much for sharing this and yes i do know a lot of people don't realize resources out there resources that's out there you know, for them so thank you. But you yourself, you're a business owner, right? So tell us a little about that, just a little bit. Thank you. I, I got my entrepreneurship from my mom. I'm an entrepreneur at heart, but I'm also an educator. I call myself an edutrepreneur. And my business, I work, I have a consulting company, which I've had since 2008. I did not activate the business component in terms of generating business. I would say within the last five years, we've become very diligent and dedicated. As an entrepreneur, through my consulting services here, I focus on organizational leadership and development. And that's just a fancy term for saying, for companies who need strategic planning, who need coaching for high level executives, who might be responding to RFPs, then we go in and we are the logistics, we are the intellectual capital that comes in and bring the goals to fruition. We come in and we do the organizational assessment, we implement the strategic plan, and we help to develop the strategic plan with the team. And that is organizational leadership that we do in development. 
there is a piece of that where my clients primarily include school disability superintendents lots of law offices because law companies i find tend to usually think about should i engage or should i enter into a certain sector like the maritime sector should we enter into cannabis and where the company we go in and we do that assessment we look at the markets we so it's a extremely it's a scientific and a technical process it's not just sitting down and having a casual conversation about engaging in an industry or entering in an industry it's extremely extremely formalized and organized and of course you know what we call gut what does your gut tell you what are the trends telling you and so that's certainly what we do and we also do business development for people who need business plans but let me just say this this is not just about collecting a check so i usually say when you say well can you write a plan you can just go online look at a plan and you could write your own. If you think that you still need assistance, then you certainly reach out to people like me. But as an entrepreneur, that certainly is mine. I do have, I would say, some very light, very light real estate development, um, real estate holdings, pardon me, not development. I know uh, many people that really have, I would say, real real estate holdings, but I entered real estate a little bit later. I'm an educator by profession, love the kids, uh, doesn't mean that you couldn't do anything else. No one is one dimensional. Just meant that I was on my way to law school. I student taught Dr. Neva and I just fell in love with the kids and I've been in love with them for 20 years. So after I left my school, I was a principal, a high school principal. I was also a deputy superintendent and deputy chief academic officer, but I left and that's when I absolutely started to focus on the consulting. But I say that too, in Jamaica, we have a restaurant called Spirits of Montego Bay. We were Spirits of Hanover. It's in Iron Shore and it sits on the water. It sits on the beach. It's absolutely stunning. So entrepreneurship is hard work. I'm always working. It's not secure during COVID-19. My company has not earned since March because my institutions that I work with and support are closed. And the kind of work that we do tends to be in-person work. And the pivots to digital, that's now what we are focused on. We're doing for ourselves what we instruct and support our clients in, in doing we're doing our own pivots so that's in terms of entrepreneurship an entrepreneur is someone who really looks at an idea and we say that a lot like everybody say yeah but you know my i'm a, my business and i'm a business and i want to start a business and it's not all that it's looking at access to capital is huge for us we don't knock the neva which you already know our community we lack access to capital and and part of it is the infrastructure Part of it is systemic racism and part of it is knowing what are the different ways in which you can actually access capital outside of what we call those hard loans from the bank, right? With those very high interest rates, that's sometimes very difficult to pay back. But an entrepreneurship really means what is something that you can innovate? What is something original that you have that you can bring to the market and monetize it? And when I started, I had one contract. I started off with that contract was $25,000. Now at that time, I was making what some would consider are a good salary by American standards. And people said, wow, you're gonna walk away a healthcare package. And I still walked away and that's all I had. And that was God. I said, this 25,000, this was my ticket. I was going to use this 25,000 to see and the clients kept coming and the referrals and they kept coming till I built up a waiting list. Now because of COVID, we're going to see what it looks like. But the good news is, is to diversify. So that's me in terms of being in a trouble. Well, thank you so much. And thank you for your transparency. And um, so funny, I'm listening to you and it's as if I am some of the things we we have uh our paths cross in a few different things quite a few different things and i was recently speaking with a group about you know with covid and being transparent and letting people know what the real deal is so for you to just say you know you know you took a hit as well in march you know you haven't been really doing you know what you have that means a lot 
for me to hear, for you to share this experience and diversifying. Because everyone, some people are so rigid and they're thinking like we should just stay with this or, you know, this is not the time for it if you want to survive. So thank you. And the last question that I have, because you spoke about the challenges just now. So if someone wanted to invest in Jamaica, what recommendation do you have for them? Invest now? <laughs> Yeah, so here's the thing with Jamaica. Jamaica is paradise. And I did not realize how much of a paradise we had until after I left Jamaica. And something I, I share with my family, certainly with my mom and my dad and my siblings and just, you know, my friends. I said, we travel all around the world. We go to Africa, Asia. You know, we go to Europe. We go up and down the Caribbean. And I was in the hills of Elder, the real bush, you know, Dr. Neva, you have to drive up on a hill. It's the most praying I do in my life when I'm climbing that hill. <laughs> because sometimes, I, you know, you're looking on the road, you be like, how oh, this car going past? How oh, this truck going past? And it's only God. And then we find, my point is that Jamaica is just the most beautiful place. So invest now. That is absolutely it. And whatever that investment looks like, whatever the investment looks like, at a level that you can certainly sustain, at a level that works for you. So it means that you may not be able to go back to build an 18,000 square feet villa, but it means that you can get your two, three bedroom house and that you can Airbnb or you can rent out. So I would say invest now. I would say to look at trends. So one of the things and again, choose what works for you. Some people may want a house. Some people might want to buy land and build. You may want to do both. The reason I bring up real estate in particular, because that's certainly not the only investment, because we know that the Jamaica Stock Exchange also does really well. I just want to let you know that Jamaican real estate does appears not to depreciate, Dr. Neva. Did you know that? I, I've i been doing my um, research and assessment, yeah. So, yes. It I gets see for, individuals do well in real estate there, yeah. It keeps appreciating. So even when markets are tough, even when economies are, I would say, are challenged, the real estate market in Jamaica. And when we said, boy, this is so expensive, by the time you turn around two, three years, what was expensive has even gotten more expensive. And so sometimes I think when we talk about investing in Jamaica, we think we're gonna get a magic sum of money. I have all this money to invest all at once. And sometimes that's not the case. For, for me, it's incremental investment. I have a group of friends. I actually went to high school with them. And you know where they said you become, I think, six, your six closest friends? They kept saying, Karen, because me, I'm mm -hmm. a teacher. So I give away everything in a Dr. Nevo. Because you're used to just taking care of the kids. <laughs> <laughs> so by the time you turn on your work, you have paycheck, you have nothing leave, you buy a uniform, you pay for graduation, you help people pay for their diplomas. Because schools charge for these things just so they could move on. And I remember they kept saying to me, Karen, you have to buy something. They are developers, so they were like, well, Karen, if you cannot afford to build, then buy. And my business partner, especially Jeffrey, he says this a lot, Karen, buy. And so just looking at whether it's land or a house that you Airbnb and then you buy another one. But there's no big money coming. That's very unusual. It's sustained investment over time that builds wealth that carries on, if that makes sense. So I would say the other thing, Dr. Neva, is the Jamaican Stock Exchange is certainly the top performing stock exchange market. You could find one of the banks, I'm not here to sell any bank, but do your research. For those, again, if you're interested, you could email us. We have a list of banks from the stock exchange that are, I would say, partners that you could invest through because some of them are not only banks, they're like investment companies. You could email us at any diaspora at gmail.com. You could go onto the Jamaica Stock Exchange and look for yourself and choose an investment partner. And you could put money in and you could absolutely take money out. Jamaica is just open for business. Go to Jampro, look at the trends. So we had the 
head of Jam Pro, and she was saying that castor oil, black castor oil, which is something me buy for my hair all the time in a doctor name. Me all in fact I have a bunch of castor oil right now. And she was saying that the market for black castor oil to export it is huge. She said there's money in that. So the thing, so I would go to Jampro, go to the experts and ask them, what is it that the markets, whether they're in the United Kingdom, the United States or Europe or Africa, what do these markets, or other Caribbean countries for that matter, what is it that, what's in demand and do the investments? Stay away from Ponzi schemes. I saw a Ponzi coming online again, Dr. Nevo, that promised that if you put in 500, you know, the Lord is going to bless you and you're going to be able to get five. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I'll be brief, but it's, I see that I was a victim. I, I think it's important to share that. In oh, my wow. very young years, I fell victim to that scheme. It's a Ponzi because the way that it's presented to you, it's from God and God wants to bless you. And those of us, you know, so boy, we're raising a church in a Dr. Neva. So we, we're really, <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, in terms of the investment and also don't do business informally. In Jamaica, formalize. We're sometimes very informal. We hire each other. We don't have a contract. We don't even know the right name. You don't know the guy them call him sweet man or dipsy i know you're doing work with dipsy and when things happen you can't find him you don't know the first name the last you name. cannot find dipsy where is dipsy yes get your no. contract and get yourself covered it's um from what i'm getting from you it's a great place to invest there are opportunities but just like anywhere else make sure you sign have everything on the dotted line yes and don't get scammed that's right and someone who knows the system because it took me a while after living here when i started to well i never really left home but there was a time where i was away from it but you have to find someone you could trust who knows the system knows what is fact from fiction because there are many fairy tales that people tell you, but Jamaican people are also very helpful. And then Mr. Boy, that thing that's on right to me, you know, and they will explore. Make sure I said the man, Dr. Neva, know the man or the woman where you deal. About it, you know, like I always tell people, don't do any secret deals in Jamaica because you, you have to process the thinking. I have a family member, they bought land and they were told that the title, Dr. Neva, was free and clear. That means something to Jamaicans. If you don't have a free and clear title, it means that the land belongs to a holding and then you cannot get your own title that you own the land. So I always say to people, whenever they say they're buying a house, is it free and clear? Like that's my, is the title free and clear? Whenever they're getting land, is the title free and clear? And I say that to say that this family member did the deal and you know sometimes you don't want to tell family your business I get it but it don't have to be family just find someone because come to find out the land title was not free and clear they didn't mm -hmm. see it they just took word of mouth because we trust people we believe because you know why would somebody lie and it has been maybe close to 10 years later still no title and we're just inching now to work with one of these land agencies to see if they can get the property surveyed and get their title like that. So I just want to use that as a cautionary tale. I am not coming here, Dr. Nevo, as a know-it-all. I want to let people know I live this. I live it with my family. I live it with myself. And because of that, I want to share that. Jamaica is good for business, but make sure that you do your homework your homework thank you so much to take this time out of your busy schedule because obviously you're in your car at the moment speaking with me just to get this done and please do continue the great work that you're doing empowering the community and giving knowledge to the community right until next time this is global business bye-bye Bye-bye. Thank you.